Today we continue chapter 4 on topic cathode ray oscilloscope. So before we discuss further, you must understand the concept of thermionic emission. So thermionic emission is process of emission of electron from a heated metal surface. As you know that under the surface of metal, there are a lot of free electrons. So when you heat up the metal, electrons will gain energy. So when it gain energy, it some when reach uh, a certain amount of energy, the electrons are able to escape uh, from the surface of metal and stay near to the surface of heated metal. Okay, so the process of the electrons that emitted out uh, when the heated when the metal is heated, we call it thermionic emission. So what is cathode ray? Cathode ray we can refer to this cathode ray tube. So what you can see here, we have a filament connect to 6 volt of AC, anode connect to EHT, and there's a vacuum part and fluorescent screen. So once we on the 6 volt AC, the filament uh, will be heated up and electrons will be released out or emit uh, due, uh, by the process of thermionic emission and stay here. So when we on the EHT power supply, there will be electrical potential energy supplied between cathode and anode. Thus the electron will be accelerated towards anode. This is like a focusing anode. Eh? The accelerated uh, electrons will form beam of electrons. So the beam of electrons is known as cathode rays. Okay? So this is how the cathode rays is produced. Okay, now we want to discuss about the properties of cathode ray. As we know that cathode ray form by beam of electron. So it will show all the properties of electron. So properties of cathode ray can be summarized as number one, negatively charged particle called electrons travel in a straight line and cast sharp shadows, travel at very high speed and have kinetic energy. Very high kinetic energy depends on the electrical potential energy supply, eh? the EHT. It can cause fluorescent effect. What is fluorescent effect? The screen eh, is coated with zinc sulfide. So there is a chemical reaction that causes kinetic energy of electron converted to light energy. So we can see there's a green light producer eh, on the screen. That one we call it fluorescent effect. So uh, cathode ray is negatively charged. Of course, it will be deflected by electric field and magnetic field. We'll discuss more on this. Okay, now we have a multi cross cathode ray tube. We put a cross here. So now it becomes a multi cross tube. Okay, so the procedure that we can uh, do based on this uh, uh, setup. So the first one, connect only the 6.3 volt power supply, meaning we just on this part. If we on this part, the filament will be heated up. We have discussed before, thermionic emission will cause electron eh, to be emitted and stay at the surface of filament. So what we do when the filament, what happened actually is when the filament heated up, when it become hot, it will glow. Once it glow, it will produce light. As you know that light will travel in a straight line, thus it will cast a shadow on the screen. There's a dark shadow on the multi cross is formed on the screen with a yellowish color light uh, surround it. Connect the 6.3 volt and EHT to electrodes. Now we on the EHT at the same time, meaning there will be electric, electrical potential energy between anode and cathode. Thus, the electron that emitted will be accelerated towards anodes and travel through the vacuum towards the screen. So what happened is the uh, the cathode ray will be blocked by the multi cross but at the edge of the multi cross the electron beam still able to travel and then it will hit the screen thus it also will produce a shadow on the screen that's surrounded by green light because at the edge of the multi cross the electrons when hit screen it will produce a fluorescent effect okay that is produce the green light Okay, now we want to discuss about the properties of uh, cathode ray that is negatively charged. What we do, we can put a bar magnet eh, 
either is is uh, deflected deflected or not uh, towards the due to the pole of magnet that we place here okay so when we put a bar magnet near to the neck of the tube two shadow are seen on the screen the light shadow remains at center because light will be never will never be deflected by magnetic field because light no charge eh? neutral but the cathode ray is negatively charged so it will be deflected so there will be a shadow caused by light and the shadow caused by the cathode ray eh? that hit the screen so there will be two shadows okay and the dark uh, the one of the shadow is shifted eh, due to the electron beam that deflected eh, uh, due to the bar magnet okay now we reverse the pole of bar magnet the light shadow remains at center because uh, light shadows travel in a straight line light travel in a straight line while the dark one is shifted to opposite direction okay actually which direction the the shadow eh, will be shifted it we can we can determine by using Fleming left hand rule. Okay, so let's look at some of the example for discussion later. Okay, discussion. This is what we have discussed before. So from that activity, we can see that a cathode ray is deflected when placed in the magnetic field okay now we want to discuss in electric field we put two plate here connect to another EHD above plate connect to positive the bottom plate connect to negative okay so now what we do the same thing for the observation no voltage connected to deflected plate meaning we off this part so no voltage to so this one is neutral so no deflection so the cathode ray will travel in a straight line and hit the screen okay next top plate connected to positive we on the power supply the top one connect to positive meaning this plate is positively charged this plate is negatively charged okay so what happened to electron beam the cathode ray is negatively charged will be attracted to positive so thus it will be deflect up so you can see electron beam will deflect upward now we change eh, or we reverse the terminal so the top one connect to negative the bottom one connect to positive so the electron beam all still eh, deflect towards positive thus deflect downward okay so this one shows that electron is negative uh, the cathode ray is negatively charged okay so it will show all the properties of electron actually Okay, so from here we can conclude that cathode ray is negatively charged, deflect in electric field. Okay, now CRO, uh, cathode ray oscilloscope. So it's very important uh, instrument that can be used to display waveform, to display signal, okay, like uh, heartbeat or the sound produced by musical instrument also we can show on the screen eh, of the CRO so the CRO consists of three main part eh? the electron gun that is the filament cathode focusing anode so this one we call it electron gun and then we have also deflection uh, deflection system consists of Y plate and X plate okay and then we have the screen eh, coated by graphite the graphite sulfide. Eh. Okay, electron gun. Electron gun used to produce narrow beam of electron. So you can uh, just read through the function of each eh, filament and cathode. Filament can be cathode itself, but now we put another piece of metal to function as cathode. So the filament will heat up the cathode. Okay, so in order to produce electron eh, that emitted through thermionic emission and we also have control grid that connect to negative terminal so the more negative the control grid it will block okay, uh, electron eh, from pass through the anode or towards the anode so meaning the brightness of the bright spot on the screen can be controlled eh, by using control grid focusing anode focus electron into beam and attract electrons from the area of control grid accelerating anode to accelerate electron beam towards the screen 
So for the flexion system, we have a Y plate and X plate. So for the Y plate, it, it allow the beam to move up and down, vertical. Eh? For the X plate, it allow the beam to deflect left and right, horizontal. Okay, so Y plate is to move electron beam vertically up and down the screen when input voltage is applied across it. So if no input voltage, it will travel in straight line and hit the screen at the center of the screen. So no deflection. Eh? So bright spot form at the center. Here we supply uh, voltage or input voltage eh, at Y plate. So what happened, the spot will be deflected up. As you know that when you connect this one to positive, electron is negative. So it will be attracted to positive plate. So deflect up. So what, when the beam deflect up, so the spot now moving up. There will be a displacement of spot eh, upwards. If we reverse eh, the terminal, we put in this one is negative. So what happened? Electron is negative, the plate is negative, so it will be repelled down, meaning it deflect down. Okay, so you can see the spot also moving down. Okay. Here we input AC voltage. For AC voltage, we know that the terminal eh, keep changing every half cycle. A positive, negative, positive, negative, every half cycle. So when the terminal keep changing, it will cause the def uh, the beam uh, to be deflected up and down. So when deflect up and down, when the spot move up and down very fast, you just can observe a straight line, a vertical straight line, no longer a spot. Okay. So if we observe a straight line, this one is AC voltage. Okay. So we have two plate here. This one is to, we can put any voltage across a Y plate. So it will able to measure the voltage that uh, input to the Y plate. For the X plate, okay. For the X plate, if we connect to any voltage, the function of the X plate is to sweep electron beam across screen horizontally from left to right. At steady speed so now the spot can move left to right if you on the time base the spot the spot now able to move left and right eh? okay now next is the fluorescent screen the fluorescent screen is coated inside with some uh, fluorescent materials such as phosphor or zinc sulfide when electron beam strike the screen the material become glows this enable bright spot to appear whenever electron beam strikes the screen because the kinetic energy of electrons change to light energy okay now we want to discuss about application of CRO to measure potential difference measure short time interval displaying waveform okay look at the the screen part eh, of the CRO you can observe this in the lab so it has screen. Screen is like graph paper. Eh? There's a division. Okay, you can maybe it's already divided to uh, one division equivalent to one cm. Okay, and so on. Okay, so the, we have a power switch, focus, x shift, y shift, time base, y gain, y input, earth, x input, ac dc switch, and brightness. So you must know all the control knob, power switch, switch control the power supply. Focus control the sharpness of the bright spot. It's connect to the focusing anode. So sharpness also is affected by brightness. Eh? That is a control grid. Brightness uh, connect to the control grid. So it will control amount of electrons that are able to accelerate and meet, hit the screen. Eh? So this one controlled by control grid. X shift adjust horizontal position of bright spot on the screen connected to X plate. So you can use this X shift whenever you want to adjust the position of the bright spot so that initially it will be at the center. So you can use this one, X shift. So this one connect to X plate, eh? meaning it able to move left and right, eh? horizontal. For Y shift, this one connect to Y plate, eh? so you can adjust vertical position. For example, you want to move the to move the spot eh? up or down, so you use Y shift. This one allow the beam to move up and down. Y plate, eh? Y gain and time base is like the scale eh, for the screen. You can look at just now the screen is like graph paper. So Y gain you can set how many volt per division. So this one control magnitude of vertical deflection of bright spot. It connect to Y plate. Okay. For time base to control magnitude of horizontal deflection of the bright spot, 
and the trace is split by the screen by adjusting frequency connect to X split. So for the Y gain, if you you set the Y gain at certain value, it will control the uh, number of uh, or magnitude of vertical deflection uh, or bright spot. So when you're on a time base, it will allow the spot uh, to move left and right at the same time. X input terminal connect to voltage at X plate. Y input terminal connect to voltage at Y plate. Okay. So normally, if you want to measure voltage, we input at Y voltage uh, to measure voltage. If you want to measure short time interval, normally we input at X input. Okay. So AC DC switch to select type of input received. When the switch is at DC position, the AC and DC voltage will be displayed. Any signal of DC voltage will be blocked by capacitor in CRO. Okay. Earth to disconnect the input voltage at Y plate and to earth the input terminal. Okay, now uh, let's look at the sum of the situation. Uh, what happened to the spot when you turn on the turn on uh, the time base or turn off the time base? Okay, so type of power Y input CRO. If no input, you can see no deflection uh, off to the cathode ray, so that it will form a spot at the center of the screen. Okay, now uh, you on the time base. Now when you on the time base. The spot now able to move left and right and back to the left very fast. So you cannot see the spot. Eh? So it just you can just observe a straight line. So this one meaning time based on. Okay. If you input DC power supply, eh? for example, uh, battery, you want to know what is the voltage of battery. So you can connect to Y input. So you can see once there is a voltage, the spot will be dis displaced up. Okay, this one time base off, so you just see a spot. If you on the time base, now the spot move horizontally, so you can observe a straight line here. Okay, if you connect AC power supply, time base off, the spot move up and down, but you observe is a vertical line only, yeah, like this. When you on the uh, the time base at the same time. Now the spot moving up and down and left and right at the same time, thus it produces a sinusoidal shape of graph like this, like a wave shape. Okay, so this one shows AC power supply. How to measure eh, potential difference using CRO? Okay, there's a formula here. DC voltage, for example, you connect a battery here. Eh, to the input Y, you want to know where is the voltage of the battery. So you can observe what happened to the spot. Eh? You find how many division eh, the spot displays. So you have this formula, DC voltage equivalent to, equals to displacement of bright spot multiply Y gain. Okay, So here Y gain is set at 1 volt per division. So it's like a scale for vertical part of the screen. So we call it Y gain. So you see the spot from center to here, it displays four division. This one time based on, so you observe straight line. So four division, thus the voltage of battery equivalent to four times Y gain. So four times one equivalent to four volt. So we get the value of the voltage of battery. Okay, let's say we... We have AC voltage connected. So time base off, you observe a vertical line like this. Time base on, you observe a sinusoidal shape of graph. Okay, so the maximum value here, we call it peak voltage. Okay, so the amplitude here, okay, uh, represent the peak voltage. Okay, Y gain set, set at 2 volt per division. So height of vertical trace from 0 position, 4. Okay. Four, you just count one, two, three, four. Okay, or oh, here one, two, three, four, four. So height from the zero position, zero is at the center of the screen. Eh? So peak voltage equivalent to displacement four multiply y gain. Y gain is two volt per division. So four times two becomes eight volt. Okay, so you get the peak voltage eh, for the AC voltage is eight volt. Let's say we want to measure short time interval, eh? time taken between two claps. Okay, so we have CRO and microphone eh? to change the sound to the electrical signal. 
then electrical signal will be displayed on the screen of CRO. Okay, in order to measure short time interval, we need to on the time base. The time base is set to 1 millisecond per division. So the time base is like the scale for horizontal part of the screen. So 1 millisecond per division means 1 division equivalent to 0 0.001 second. So from the peak to peak here, this is the signal uh, for the first clap, this is the second clap. Okay, so how many division? We just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 division. Okay, so we have the formula, the short time interval equivalent to multiplying the number of division by time base. Meaning, meaning uh, number of division between two signal times time base. Okay, so length between two signal equivalent to 5 division. Time base set at 10 millisecond per division. Millisecond uh, must change to second. So time taken is the length between two signal 5 multiply time base. So 10 millisecond convert to second 0 0.01. So you get 0 0.05 second. Okay, now we want to solve problem. Uh, some of the question. Look at example 1 here. AC power supply connected to Y input of CRO setting CRO setting at 20 volt per division and 5 millisecond per division. Calculate period, frequency and peak voltage. So this one, if you want to measure period, remember definition for period, time taken for one complete cycle. Time taken for one complete wave. Time taken for one complete oscillation. So from here we can see uh, one complete wave. If water wave, you have trough plus one crest. One trough plus one crest. So it becomes one complete wave. So the same thing. So here we have one complete cycle. How many division? We just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. One complete cycle, 14 division. That's the period equivalent to 14 division. Multiply time base. Time base equivalent to... Where is time base? Uh, from here, time base equivalent to... 5, uh, sorry, 5 millisecond per division. So it's 14 uh, times 0. 0 0.05 eh? so 14 times 0 0.05 so you get 0 0.07 second frequency use formula f equivalent to 1 divided by t so 1 divided by 0 0.07 you get 14.3 hertz for the peak voltage you can just count for the the peak part here the positive part or the negative part same eh? so you have 4 division so for the vertical part, eh, there is a voltage, deflection, multiply Y gain. Y gain 20 volt per division. So 4 times 20, you get 80 volt. So you get 80 volt for the peak voltage. Okay, second, example diagram 2 shows a trace produced by an AC power supply connected to CRO with time base is switched off. The Y gain is set to 20 volt per division. Okay, find the peak voltage. So I think for the example 2 and 3, this one will become uh, your exercise. You try and to do it uh, later, you will discuss the question. So that's all.